great weekend and it's the 28th of november so it's that time of the month where y'all got money how was black friday as i'm dressed in black oh yeah looking cute right <laughs> all right all right all right you're all live with us on attenville tv this is the cracker Dawn show with myself kimiana hitalal as your host and if you want to interact with us in studio today you can do so with the contact details which you'll find at the bottom right of the screen can you see it Okay, okay, okay. Now, because you are live, you can also use the bottom column, which everyone else does, and it says live chat. You can type your comments there. I'm your host, Kimera Hidalal, so stick with me for the next hour as I'll be keeping you entertained. Today, we're going to be talking about different types of cults. And uh, you know what? We all need to have a better understanding. As religious as you may be, or as cultural as you may be, you need to learn that cult means group. It's not just evil. Yeah? All right, so we're going to jam back here for the next hour. But before we do, let's take a little break. We'll come back straight after this. Look at slide four. <gasps> Becky, don't lose your cool. Think of the quarter pounder. Mm, it will taste like sun, sunshine on a rainy day. Oh, so make I don't like seeing an advert like that when I'm fasting. <laughs> McDee's! That'll be a cool breakfast for a Monday morning, right? Well, welcome back, everybody. If you just joined us, uh, you are live with us at Attenville TV. This is the Cracker Down Show with myself, Kimela Hidalal, as your host. And if you want to interact with us in studio today, please do so on the, well, with the contact details right there or use the bottom column that says live chat. We've got Ramosh Nipadachi coming in saying, Good morning! Arums! Ah, morning, honey! How you doing? How's your weekend? I just want to say thank you to Ramosh Nipadachi for having me at our house on Friday. Yeah! Yeah, thank you. Food was good. The sandwich was good. Uh, you know, and please give your mom a big thanks for for, her, for blessing us with two days of supper. <laughs> thank you so so much. All right, for those of you who want to be just like Ramashni, interact with us in studio today. We're talking about cults. Now, before we get too serious, let me make you laugh. Oh well, let me say, let me let my favorite radio presenter make you laugh this morning, as he is my favorite radio presenter. Coming up next, Wacky and Simpson with smartphone you don't deserve. Jonathan, keeps screen keeps going to black. Mm -hmm. He's taking it into Samsung to be fixed. <laughs> I'm phoning from Samsung. Oh, shame. Poor man. <laughs> and as you know, in a prank, my job is to escalate the situation as quickly as possible and resolve nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Can I achieve success once again? Hello? Hello, Jonathan? Yeah. It's Fred here from Samsung. Yes, Fred? I've got your phone. Is it back? Is it working? Um, well, I, I'm the, 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 the actual technician who's uh, looking at it. Yeah. W what did you do to this thing? Or what happened is the phone where I put the phone down a little bit harder and, and occasionally it just shuts off completely. The screen goes black. So when you say you put the phone down a little bit harder, in actual fact what you're telling me is you dropped it. No, I didn't drop it now. No, that's not a description that I dropped it now. Um, the, the, the phone is uh, basically what we call an ID10T. Yeah. That's what we write it down as. I didn't think you're an idiot. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know you would know that expression. <laughs> yes, I know that expression. Oh. Now it's awkward. <laughs> no, now it's awkward. Uh, uh, Maybe you should try like an old Nokia. Maybe I think you should do your job and repair my phone. Those phones are, are a bit more robust and clearly you don't have the, the delicate hands to deal with a smartphone. You need to know how to look after it. It's like having a dog. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you don't have a dog, do you? I do have a dog. Well, I'm surprised your dog isn't dead. <laughs> and if you did your job for free, you will fix my phone. Listen, is there any physical damage on that phone? No. I gave it to perfect mint condition to the guys at Vertical. That's it. No, but... You, 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 you,
curious drop that is their problem. What I'm I saying is, what I'm saying is, that is what happened with your phone. Listen, you good. Shut up. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you think you're talking to? All right. Look. So give me your supervisor's number or whoever you report to. This is not going to work for me. All right. Uh, I'm just so, telling you that you don't deserve a smartphone. I'm telling you, don't you don't <laughs> deserve anything. Smartphones are designed for smart people. And f***ing idiots phone me with the talking shit about me. I'm talking trying to convince me smartphones for smart people. Yes, like f*** you, how do you know I'm not smart? <laughs> yes. Well, if I'm, I'm not... Here, so I'm sort of that out. Well, look, if I'm so... If, if, I'm wasting my f***ing time. Listen, if I'm, I'm so stupid, why am I fixing... Why am I fixing... <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, let's finish the conversation. Or did you drop that phone as well? <laughs> no, I didn't drop this phone as well. Okay, well, what I'm not going to talk anything further with you, alright? Listen, I don't want to talk to you, alright? Your, your communication skills is going for a full of crap. I'm the client in this situation and telling you I'm stupid. I, I, where, where, where do you, who, do you, who do you report to? I didn't say you were stupid. I said you were an idiot. Yeah, it's the same thing. If you're stupid, you're born that way. An idiot, you become that way. Oh. <laughs> okay, now, what, what, what's your point with this now? I would like okay, to... Now your concern. Your concern is to fix my phone. If it's damaged, you fix it. That's what you guys do. Phones it doesn't help you telling me I'll drop my phone. I can drop my phone. It's my property. If it's broken, it's my responsibility. I'll give it to you. You guys fix it. That's your job. Do your job, I'll do mine. All right. No, you know what you don't understand is is that this phone is still under contract, right? Yes. So how much are you paying for this repair? I'm not paying for this repair. Exactly. I haven't even been charged, been charged for this repair. Exactly, because somewhere along the line, either insurance or it's going to fall under your contract is going to pay yeah. for this. So you treat these phones like, like, like rubbish and somebody else picks up the tab. Now, is that fair? I'll abuse what just what I'll abuse the phone as much as I want to because it's mine. No, but right. I pay for it each and every month. Uh, I'll, I'll because it's ridiculous uh, that. Uh, uh, no, no, stop wasting my time. <laughs> what? Still stop wasting my time. I'm done talking. I'm not talking further to you. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Jackie. Hi. Darren Simpson, yeah. Yes, yes, I know it is. Okay. Hold on for me. No, 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 no. Put Jonathan on the line. Hello. Why you, not? you f- get Jackie's number now. <laughs> Do you know who's speaking? No, I don't know who's speaking. I don't even f- care. It's Wackhead Simpson, brother. No, Wackhead. Jack. Now you care. Yeah, now I care. <laughs> okay. I see these people high fiving each other in my office now, and I top and stuff. It's been a sh- there already, so now you just put the cherry on top. But when you phone now, Jackie's phone, I was on the line with the manager telling the people, what the f*** is going on here? What is this? <laughs> you see, be careful what conversations you have in the office. Because the whole office is listening and conspiring and they're making contact uh-huh. with you. It was the, hi, wacky <laughs> for me. The, 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 the very... Definite tone change. Mm. Um, if, if you are listening to any conversations in the office, please report them straight to me. <laughs> Whoa, what a beautiful prank on a Monday morning about a smartphone that you don't deserve. All done by Wackhead Simpson himself. Makes me laugh every single day. Well, stay tuned for a jam pack show as you're still watching Attenville TV. The Cracker Dine Show with me, Kimara Hiralal. Stay where you are. We'll come back straight after this. Rich taste that says you've arrived. We got her. Living a life of illusion. Leaving your finances on the rocks. In this world of Bazotina Band, do you want a bank that takes your money or a bank that takes your money seriously? 
Wow, welcome back everybody. If you're just joining us, you are live with us on Atten Roll TV. This is the Crack of Dawn show with myself, Kimera Hirlal, as your host. And if you want to interact with us as you did today, please do so with the contact details at the bottom right of the screen. Or you can use the bottom column where it says live chat. Today we're getting a little serious and we're talking about different types of cults. We've got Devin Priyachi coming in on uh, YouTube saying, Good morning! Morning, honey! Aww. <laughs> Thanks for joining the show this morning. Uh, is it a bit early to wake up for you today? <laughs> All right, Devin, I don't usually get you in the morning show, but thank you so, so much for joining us today. You can, you can, you can share your comments. You, this is your, your safe space, your free space to, to speak about anything you feel. Uh, just watch with your vulgarity. This is a family show. And uh, yeah, we are broadcasting live. So share your thoughts with me, what you think on cults. Now, today we're talking about different uh, types of cults. Let's talk a bit about something called the brethren, right? So now the brethren is one of, you could say, one of the, uh, the several informal names for a nameless religious movement, which was actually created by Jimmy T, also known as Jim Roberts, okay? And other names include the body of Christ and brothers and sisters. Now learning about this today, the movements, um, the, well, the movement members um, shun material things and family living essential as as vagrants and doing odd jobs to pay their expenses now the movement's uh, way of life has led the uh, the accusations that this is a actual cult let's take a look a bit about what it's about have a look now i'm not planning on starting any scary cults soon especially when there's so much competition out there these are top five terrifying cults that still exist in 2022 Number five, the brethren. Do you feel like the modern world has got you down? Got you running around feeling overwhelmed? Perhaps you need a break from it all and you want to get away. I want to go back to a simpler time. Well then perhaps the brethren is the movement you've been looking for. Founded by Jim T. Roberts, the movement seeks to shed all of the convenience and accommodations of modern living, with its members instead choosing to live as vagrants, drifting on the edge of society, away from the prying eye of the modern world. Their leader believes that in order to be guaranteed a spot in heaven, one must purify themselves. And to the brethren, this means purifying themselves of just about every facet of modern living. As part of their renouncement of all modern living, brethren must forsake all of their family, friends, their jobs, their livelihoods, all in favor of their new brothers. You aren't allowed to partake in any material goods of any kind. Sew your own clothing and eat what you can scavenge. This particularly grisly habit is what gave the cult its enduring nickname of garbage eaters for their tendency to dumpster dive. You're not even allowed to laugh, celebrate, or play, as all celebrations must be saved for the return of the Savior at the end of the world. Although giving those conditions, I'm not sure what you'd have to laugh about. It goes as far, too, as members being barred from receiving treatment or medicine, even for common curable illnesses. Because members are forced to cut themselves off from their families, oftentimes members disappear without their family members ever even getting to know what happened. As such, groups have sprung up to try and reconnect brethren to their families and hopefully get them a dinner that didn't come out of a dumpster. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Thanks for that, honey. Um, whoa. No, man. Uh, very good morning to Kim Parachi this morning. Thanks for joining the show today. We're talking about cults, different types of cults. And uh, what you just watched was The Brethren. Well, they, they, that's the name of their cult. Uh, hey, yo. Okay, I love food and I'm not fussy, so I eat anything. Okay, except tripe. <laughs> All right. But eating out of a dumpster is unhygienic and is no good for no human being's health. Yeah. You don't know what's been in that bin. Not everybody does what my dad taught me. Every time it's bin day, you take the bin outside on the lawn, you put soap and you hose it and you clean it out. Now, not everybody takes care of the bins the way that I do. So, yeah, I will not eat out of a dumpster. I laugh all the time, so I'm already against that cult, don't you think? Yeah. All right, so this cult actually originated in 1971. So look at it, right? Um, they, they say here that it's a new religious movement, right? And as you heard uh, uh, in, in the clip or snippet before, that you have before this, it's, they're waiting for Christ to come back in order to smile, celebrate, and eat well. I'm totally against that. I'll die. I have to laugh every day. And now... If you look at the leader, Jerry Williams, this is the person who started this movement. <coughs> Excuse me, beg your pardon. And if you look at this, it's called 
it's actually separated from the Jesus movement. So it's like, the, it's the opposite of Christianity. Just remember, I'm a Hindu girl. I come from a Hindu mother and I come from a Christian father. So I have a bit of, you know, my, 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 my wisdom is uh, quite up to, to par with, with Christianity and Hinduism as well. So if you look at it, now, Jimmy T. Roberts, who I mentioned before, who's the founder and also known as the brother evangelist of Roberts, he is the son of former Pentecostal minister. Just so you know, he's a former pe uh, a son of Pentecostal minister created in the movement around 1971, drawing together followers of Jesus of the Jesus movement, okay, across the United States. Now, Roberts uh, had become convinced that mainstream churches were too worldly and wished to uh, create a wandering discipleship patterned on the New Testament apostles. Also, he began recruiting a, a core followers in Colorado and California. And also, at first, they adopted a communal lifestyle, which you've just seen. Yuck, I can't get past it. I'm so sorry. I tried. It's hard to respect it when you're eating out of a dumpster. Yeah? Because I feel that you're not respecting your body if you're doing such. Now, Jim Roberts actually died uh, December 6, 2015 in Denver, Colorado at the age of 76. Sure, eating out of a dumpster with bad health like that. I don't know how he lived so long. Anyway, um, his, uh, his cause of death was listed as metastatic uh, autosonima of unclear primary. Okay, I don't know what that is, but yeah. All right, so upon Jim Roberts' death, uh, the leadership role of the organization was passed to Jerry Williams, a.k.a. Brother Hester, and uh, three other elders. Now, the, the Brethren Beliefs, here we go. Brethren Beliefs are prominently mil millenarian and also upper Celtic. So, it's centered on the teaching of that humanity is in the end times, basically. <laughs> Anyway, uh, they, they say we're in the end times and that members must purify themselves in preparation for the end of the world. I do not understand the purifying, purifying part with the dumpster, but hey. Um, now, it, the, the movement directs new members to sell their possessions and break ties with their families as a necessary part of earning salvation. They also, any finances generated are distributed to, according to the need. And uh, for instance, money might be used for material to sew, well, to basically sew your clothing, as you heard before, um, traveling expenses or cooking spices. In some cases, um, new members' money was given to the older members, but uh, in other cases, it was kept by the individual to do what they would want to do with it. Now, there's main scriptures used to support this brethren, right? So they say, um, Luke, uh, they say Luke 14.33, likewise, Whoever so he be of you, the forsaken, not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Any comments on that? Interact with us in studio today. You don't be, have to be a Christian or an antichrist <laughs> to interact with us in the story today. We are talking about different types of cults. But hey, different beliefs, different, different ways, different, different ways of life. Not everybody is the same. But everybody has a different way and manner of reaching the man upstairs. Hey, you know what I'm talking about. All right. So moving on from the different beliefs, here's the secrecy behind the brethren. Okay, you guys listening. So a highly publicized case of deprogramming in um, Arkansas in during 1975 brought unwelcome attention to the brethren, right? So beginning in the, of, of the 1970s, stories written by members and Rachel Martin also began appearing. So the coverage often was negative, okay, and continued to share or oh, continued to surface in the media. The group dropped out of sight in 1980. Now, uh, after several police raids and arrests in 1970, Robert ordered members to keep their locations a secret and not to communicate with their families. The members fear being arrested or kidnapped at the request of distraught families were instances reported recently as 1998. Now, families of members have asserted that their relatives and moved out or out and about to keep them from re-establishing their family contact. Wow. <coughs> Excuse me. So parents whose children have disappeared into the movement have formed a group called the Roberts Group Parents Network. Now, for mutual support and to aid locating missing members, in 2011, uh, the Evangeline Gregios document film, also known as God Willing, explored the experiences of parents trying to re-establish contact with their children 
who had joined the Brethren and disappeared. Now, the film has since been aired on PBS stations in the United States. Oh, guys, as you know, you can check soap today. Uh, go, go have a look. Look at the film called, uh, uh, this film, it's called to Explore. Okay, <laughs> hold on, I lost it. Okay, so it's being aired in PBS, right? So check it out. It's a documentary film, Evangeline Gregios. Check it out. It's all about this cult of the Brethren where people are actually gone missing because they were afraid of being found or arrested. The question is, what were they doing to get arrested? If they say they don't harm others or they don't harm other people or they don't do wrong, what were they getting arrested for? Today we're talking about different types of cults. We'll talk about it a little bit more straight after this commercial break. Put a spell on you because your mind. Welcome back, everybody, who just joined us. Good morning to you. You are streaming live with us right here on Attenville TV. Yeah, yeah. This is the Cracker Down Show with myself, Kimera Hiralal, as your host. And if you want to interact with us in studio today, please do so with the contact details that you'll find at the bottom right of your screen. Or you could use the bottom column where it says live chat. Now, this morning, we're talking about different types of cults. Are they good? Are they evil? Well, let's get to know them a little bit. Now, today we're going to show you something called, uh, uh, well, okay, the first one that you just missed. If you missed it, please click on the link later and you can watch the entire show again. Now, we spoke about the Brethren. Let's take a look at Happy Science. See what they have to say. Number four, Happy Science. Happy Science, formerly known as the Institute for Research in Human Happiness, is a Japanese New Age religion that's sort of a loot bag for as many religious concepts as you can think of. In happy science, all gods that have been worshipped throughout history across various religions were actually all the same god, named El Kintare, roughly translating to the singer. The group's founder, Ryoho Okawa, just happens to be the incarnation of all these holy deities manifested as one man. He also claims to have the energies of various celebrities inside him, including Freddie Mercury and former US presidents. The group preaches happiness, obviously. Following the group's mantra, in order to obtain happiness, one must practice the principles of happiness known as the fourfold path. Love that gives, wisdom, self-reflection, and progress. Now, Happy Science isn't just some fringe group in a tent in the backwoods. Rough estimates suggest that the group pulls inwards of $45 million a year. Sounds like there's some kind of profit happening here. That's a, that, that's a little pun for you. Happy Science has a full-on media division, producing several animated and live-action films, and publishing books numbering close to the thousands, mostly being transcriptions of Okawa's lectures about happiness, spirituality, and occasionally aliens, as a major part of the group's belief revolve around UFOs, aliens, and other cosmic entities. The group is fairly widespread, boasting temples across the world and various continents. The group's statistics claim that there are 11 million members worldwide, although more conservative estimates put it around 30,000 worldwide. Regardless, happy science is something that's clearly making a lot of people happy. <laughs> Thanks for that, dear. All right, all right, all right. So apparently happy science is something that makes people happy. Well, that's a good thing, right? That's a cult that's actually good. It makes people happy. Now, a little bit about, uh, well, happy science. In the beginnings, uh, this was in the 1970s when it was originated and, and discovered and whatever. And um, with its headquarters in New York, it developed into a controversial network of churches with 10,000 members. So, uh, well, it had 10,000 members and 110 communes at its peak, but only a few hundred members in their later years. Now, the trail underwent a conversion experience in the early 1970s in Allentown, joined a Pentecostal church from which it was expelled, and began teaching Bible and developing a following. 
So that was quite cool. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, the gentleman that you just saw in the snippet that we played for you a few minutes ago, um, he changed the name of the For Forever Family to the Church of Bible Understanding. That's what you just watched. Now, in the ni this, is, this happened in 1976. All right, so ex-members actually complained that they worked uh, very, few, very, very low wages, okay? And uh, with all the money going to the church, the group had a communal lifestyle. And the trial maintaining that only he can understand the true meaning of the words God. Ooh, okay. So uh, uh, the trail encourages his group members to break off contact with their families. Over time, the members decreased in numbers, and the group has now been accused of being a cult. And it has been uh, estimated that the trail became a millionaire from this. Ooh, how did that happen? Okay, it's quite, it's quite, everybody would ask that question. How do you make so much money and what were you doing to make that money, you know? So uh, anyway, Reverend Bruce Ritter of the Covenant House accused the Church of Bible Understanding and enticing 17 youth out of the, the shelter with promises of salvation. And the state court like also enjoined and the, uh, enjoined them from housing or transporting from under age eighteen without parental permission. What I don't like about the well, we've, we've been through three different types of cults now. What I don't like is the fact that you have to stop contact or complete contact, lose absolute contact with your family and friends, which I don't feel is the right way of life. You know what I mean? It's all about. When you're at work, you have colleagues, you have a family. Uh, if you're blessed to have a family, why do you have to break contact off with them? Especially if you're doing good, especially if you're serving above, which is the Lord or God or who, however you may address the higher power. But uh, something is funny. Something fishy that none of us know about. Every single place that is known as a cult is very secretive. You don't even know what they do inside there. What do they preach if they're not following a, uh, the common type of religion? It's actually quite interesting and quite shocking. Now, if you look at the business ventures, we're talking about this place making million, millions and millions of rands, okay? So, uh, let's say dollars here. Okay, so now with the carpet cleaning business, this is what they had. Now, Christian Brothers Carpet Cleaning Business. They were an inspiration to Seinfeld's Sunshine Carpet Cleaning Cult, and they also started a used van business as a commercial venture. Now, also, the group's only successful venture is All Good Things, and New York City, ha! Dollars we're talking about. So New York City actually based retail uh, retail stores selling architectural salvage goods and antiques. So now in 2017, uh, the stores funneled $6.8 million to the Church of Bible Understanding according to the nonprofit tax uh, filing for that year. Okay, okay. Now this is the, now you're gonna wonder why I'm clapping my hands. They have an, an a Haitian orphanage. That's beautiful. Okay. So now, in November 2013, uh, the Associated Press investigated claims that the church was at fault for running a substandard housing for orphans in Haiti. And after the two homes, the church reigns received, well, well, actually falling grade from the Haitian agency that monitors these orphanages. And even though they claim in the IRS filings to be spending around 2.5 million rand, uh, dollars annually, the home for boys and girls was so dirty, overcrowded during recent inspections that the government said that it should not remain open. It's not kosher. Okay. Now, if you're going to be a person who's going to give back to your community or to your people and have orphanages or build homes or whatever the case may be, it has to be clean. It has to be a place where you would actually stay. So that means you are treating the next person as an equal. And that is when you are giving back. So according to me, Something special here, they are doing something behind the scenes or under the cover where they are placing or doing their documents or should I say their black and white is saying they're giving money to these orphanages but they are not taking care of it. So where is the money really going and where is the money really truly coming from? As we're talking about different types of cults this, uh, this morning here on the Krakadana, don't go anywhere, we're going to come back straight after this commercial break.
Welcome back, everybody. If you just joined us, you are live with us at Attenville TV. This is the Cracker Down Show with myself, Kimura Hiralal, as your host. And if you want to interact with us in studio today, please do so with the contact details which you'll find at the bottom right of the screen. Or you could use the bottom column where it says live chat. Now, if you are watching this for the very first time, please do like share and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it already now before we cut to commercial i was talking about a place called the church of bible understanding now what i want you to do is take a look at the clip of the church of bible understanding and then we just remember the one we just watched which is called happy science we're going to talk a little bit of both as we we go along with the show so uh let's take a look at the church of bible understanding number three realism Realism is the teaching that humanity was birthed by a hyper-advanced race of aliens called the Elohim, who genetically engineered us as their children. Our most famous religious leaders over the years were Elohim human hybrids, whose wondrous abilities and powers were mislabeled as prophets. It's said that by 2035, if Realism's followers have achieved the tenets correctly and fulfilled the movement's teaching by spreading its message and building an embassy to welcome its 39 prophets, the group rose to prominence in the 1970s when its leader, Claude Vorian, who called himself Rayo, claims he had an experience with a UFO where a spacecraft flying overhead was full of beings who told him about humanity's future and past and handed him a Bible and told him it was his mission to build that embassy. Now all of this sounds like pretty standard cult stuff, worshipping aliens who are secret progenitors, but where things get pretty interesting and worthy of note is that around 2002, a company called Clonaid, with direct ties to realism, claimed to have done the impossible and cloned a baby girl, appropriately named Eve. Immediately, it spurned all kind of controversy, led to several investigations, discussions about the ethics and morality of the situation. But despite all this, no actual evidence of the clone baby ever came up. Eve isn't the only alleged baby birthed this way through Clonade, with several claims of Clonade brand clones being produced since the original story in 2002, all with dubious claims, including controversial rapper Kid Boo, who claims to have been born there. So either Eve is still hiding somewhere, or maybe it was a bit of an exaggeration. Regardless, Clonaid charges up to $200,000 for their services, which might seem a bit expensive, but hey, you're getting a great deal on a clone. You're gonna make your money back on that. So if anyone's got a piggy bank just weighing them down, please send me a message and then get back to me and introduce me to you and your clone. Thank you so much for that. All right, all right. So you just had a look at uh, the Church of Bible Understanding, and I told you guys a bit about that in their business ventures, and they are busy coining it. So what do you do when, when, when there's no there's no reference to them actually praising God or them actually doing good? Yes, they have a nice they have a couple of orphanages. Okay, fine, they've got an orphanage that they say they are funding, they say they are doing well, but then under the inspection you people find out or the public finds out that this place is dirty it's overcrowded kids are not taken care of so there's something fishy because where is the funding or money going to and it's it's actually quite obvious that they are well uh, it's actually quite obvious that they are and uh, up to something right so now looking at the nj realism right Okay, as we call it, realism. <laughs> All right, so the NJ realism was also known as the UFO religion. Okay, now when it opened up, you saw the UFO, right? Now, um, it, it, it was actually founded in the 1970s. So you notice most of these cults were, were happening in the 1970s. This was the year that my mother was actually born. All right, so uh, it was actually in France, okay? Uh, and it, it was by Claude Virilin. Excuse my stuttering, these names are quite difficult. Now, also now known as Rail. Now, Rail, uh, scholars of religion, as they call themselves, classify Railism as a new religious movement. Now, the group is formalized in the international Railman, uh, well, Railian movement known as IRM, and also Railian Church, a hierarchical organization under Rail's leadership. Now, we went through a couple of, uh, church, uh, we're going to talk about a couple of cults, right? So the first one we started with was the Brethren. And then uh, I wanted to talk about Happy Science as well. And NJ Realism, also the Church of Bible, uh, Bible Understanding. And then there's one called the Nuwavian Nation. 
Now we're going to talk about all of them and as as we go along with the show, please do interact with us in studio today. If you choose to stay anonymous, you can drop us a WhatsApp at 074-660-5829. Uh, again, I'll give you the number 074-660-5829. Tell us what you think. If you are part of a cult, please help us clear the air as we don't have a good judgment on what a cult really is or what a new religious movement really is. When you guys break away from Christianity, Hinduism, uh, if you're a Muslim, we don't understand why would you break away from religions that are thousands and thousands of years old and just create your own because the 1970s was not too long ago. And my mom is still alive. She was born in 1970, guys. So you guys need to interact with me and make, the, make me and the public realize what was it that made human beings make the decision to go and start a new cult, a new religion, a new way of religion. A new, I don't understand the meanings because I haven't been inside a cult church myself. But what I'd like to do is actually take this camera with me and actually go do, do uh, my own personal documentary for my own personal experience and try to understand what these religions are about. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the, the, the Nawabian uh, nation. They're also another cult. So uh, let's see what this one is about. Let's take a look. Number two, the Church of Bible Understanding. Hey, real quick for me, what's your favorite Seinfeld episode? Yeah, I probably could have guessed it was the comeback or the contest, and those are both great answers. But what about the checks? Where George gets involved with that group of carpet cleaners who end up trying to recruit for a cult, and, and he's all mad they want his boss, but they don't want him? That's the kind of shenanigan that could only happen to Costanza. Turns out that episode was based on a real group called the Church of Bible Understanding, although at the time they were going by Christian Brothers Carpet Cleaners, no doubt where the idea came from. This undertaking was one of the group's many noble business ventures, including a used van business and a New York chain of used antique stores. Like most cults, the group was led by a charismatic figurehead, one Stuart Trail, who maintained to his followers that only he was capable of understanding the word of God and understanding how to annoy George Costanza. Their leader was expelled from the Pentecostal church he worshipped at in the early 70s, and after his expulsion, refused to give up the dream and formed his own church, promising a communal lifestyle of salvation. And if reports from former members are to be believed, hard work for below minimum wage. Members were isolated from their friends, families, and communities, and encouraged to devote themselves wholly to the church. Besides a less than flattering appearance on Seinfeld, the group most recently made headlines after an orphanage they built in Haiti had burned to the ground. After several claims that orphanages the group had been producing in Haiti had been extremely substandard, shoddy, overcrowded, and dirty. The leader, Stuart Trail, passed away in 2018. Current estimates suggest that the group has dwindled down from thousands of members in its heyday to just dozens now. And there's no word if Larry David was ever a member or associated. Thank you so much for that. That is one of our reporters who's become a resident right here on Attenville TV. Thank you, honey. All right, so we, we had a look at the Breton cult. We had a look at the Happy Science cult. We had a look at NJ uh, Realism Cult. We looked at the Church of Bible Understanding. Last but not least, let's take a look at the Norwegian Nation. Number one, the Norwegian Nation. Dwight York had a dream. Like many Americans, he believed in simple things, like amassing an army to help him fight Satan amongst the stars. Let me back that up for you just a little bit and introduce you to the Nuwabian Nation, or the United Nuwabian Nation of Moors. Adding just a twist of Christianity, African rituals, and a heavy dose of Egyptian mythology mixed with aliens, Dwight York had a perfect recipe for a wild cult story. The nation believed that they needed to prepare themselves for an inevitable duel of the fates among the stars, and that the 144,000 chosen ones would accompany Dwight into outer space for the fate of the galaxy, zooming away on a flying city to Orion to fight Satan. Now, I have no comment about any of that. Maybe it was the cult of personality, maybe it was the promise that you could potentially get involved in a Star War, but this was a surprisingly popular movement around rural Georgia, where York built up a massive compound that looked a bit like a pavilion out of your favorite Egypt-themed amusement park, and bringing in members in droves. As the numbers grew, the mythology grew, incorporating cloning, racial theory, anti-government conspiracy, and a whole lot more. But the dreams of the starfarers would be cut short when an investigation in 2002 revealed a horrifying truth, that their leader Dwight York was involved in a massive human trafficking operation 
said to have been comprised of as many of a thousand people. On May 8, 2002, the Sheriff's Department of Georgia, with the aid of the FBI, shut the entire operation down. York was arrested and sentenced to a life sentence where he's still serving out his 135 years. One Georgia sheriff involved, Sheriff Sills, described the trafficking operation as the best kept secret in Georgia I'd seen in my 47 years as a police officer. The compound was seized and swiftly destroyed. Despite all this though, there are still members out there. All right, all right, all right. So you've taken a look at all of the cults that we all have well, wondered about. And the, those are the, the most popular ones that we've found. Now, looking at the different types of cults, hey, you're noticing the FBI is shutting all of them down. There's quite a few cults in South Africa, which I have to go and make sure my facts are straight before I do it live in the show, as Attenville TV is a variety show, and it's about your current affairs as well. And I love reporting things that people need to know about in order to protect themselves if it's bad. And if it's good, you need to go and get yourself experience within it, right? <laughs> all right, all right. So as we're talking about different types of cults, looking at uh, everything that we've just seen, right? Now, everybody knows in the modern English-speaking world, a cult is usually, uh, well, a term for a social group. And it's also that it's defined by unusual religious things that we talk about, or spiritual acts, or as well as, uh, well, philosophical beliefs and rituals. When you come to the word rituals, there's different things that actually can uh, scare you. Because not, uh, not most of, most of cults actually do not follow the right things and do the right things in order to connect to God or connect to the higher power. So that's why I find it strange and that is why I would not interact with those type of things. Now, uh, this is my personal opinion, my personal, well, information that I'm sharing with you, that what I think of them. These are my opinions. But if you want to interact with us in studio today, please comment in the bottom column where it says live chat. I'd like to hear what you have to say about cults. And if you are part of a cult that is very secret, secretive, can you please help me to t uh, teach the public and inform the public that it's not evil or it's not up to no good or you can actually tell us what your personal cult is actually doing and what good they do and why you chose to follow that cult it helps us with the show yeah all right, all right so interacting with us in studio today bottom, bottom column live chat or use the contact details at the bottom right of your screen now if you look at it an older sense of the word involves well you know the word cult right an older sense of this word involves a set of religious devotional uh, devotional practices Right, and that are conventional with their culture and related to a particular figure and often associated with a particular place. Now, references to the word cult um, are particular Catholic saints or imperial cult of ancient Rome, for example, uh, uses the sense of the word cult. Now, a lot of people break away from certain uh, Christianity. As you also get Hinduism, then you get those sad ones that you go, uh, one person will tell you, that, I'm Hindu, but I fall, I fall under Hinduism, but I'm Tamil or I'm Hindu. Well, I'm Gujarati. And then that's how people end up breaking it away. And I, that is why I used to personally say religion is man-made to keep discipline. But then you'll notice now when people break away and create their own cults or their own rituals or their own religion, um, it's like they chose to follow a specific way only, not follow the whole religion. Say I, I'm Hindu, right? And you decide to say, okay, I want to fall under Hinduism as a whole because you want to follow and do the right thing. That's me. But you could be different and say, hey, I'm only a Lord Shiva devotee or I'm only a devotee of Jesus Christ. So I'm only going to do things that are going to connect myself to Jesus. Listen, guys, I have we have here a show called The Journey, and it's a spiritual show about exploring Hinduism as a whole. But what I've done, I've taken into account with my team, Ramashni Padachi and Andy Poonen, and we are a team from different sides of the culture. Like, you know, different types of cultures. We mix everything. We do Vedic astro astrology as well, explaining how every single part of Hinduism and other cultures actually are true as I deal with science as well. So it all ties up and it all makes sense if you just join the show every night at 7 o'clock. It's called The Journey with myself, Kimera Hiraral. It's about culture. It's about where stories came from before we actually made Hinduism a religion. And it's got a, a touch of, of, of Christianity. It's got a touch of how the Muslims work. It's got a touch of vertical astrology. It's got everything all in one and it's all about culture. That's all I got to say for you guys on this beautiful Monday morning. I hope I didn't ruin your morning by talking about cults. It is a Monday and we're all about current affairs and the variety. Well, let's keep you entertained. But before we do, let's come back straight after this commercial break. 
You can do anything. All you need is determination. And a fresh pair of these. Nalis, Nalis. But what's the point of looking like in a game if all your money is on your feet and your dreams go up in flames? In this world of doing it for Ikram, do you want a bank that takes your money? Or a bank that takes your money seriously? Welcome back, everybody. You are live with us on Atonville TV. This is the Cracker Dawn Show with myself, Kimela Hidalal, as your host. If you want to interact with us on this beautiful Monday morning, please do so with the contact details that you'll find at the bottom right of your screen. Or you can use the bottom column chat where it says live chat and join us. Well, I did promise you that this show was not going to be entirely serious at all about cults. Uh, well, let's forget about that as we're here to entertain you. And you know we're all about showcasing talent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So this morning we got, uh, you know, Ronan Keating's song, uh, song called When You Say Nothing At All. Do -do, do -do. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's leave it to the talented people and the professionals. Today we got covering that song. Uh, they are named Macpherson and B.A. and Nick Unique 7. Check it out. It's amazing how you can speak right to my heart. Without saying a word, you can light up the dark. Trials I made, I can never explain. What's been saved, baby, when your heart and mind? The smile on your face lets me know that you need me. There's a truth in your eyes saying you never leave me. The touch of your hand says you catch me whenever I fall. You say it best when you say nothing at all. The 
touch of your hand says a catch whenever I fall you say best when you stand nothing at and unique seven with Ronan Keaton's When You Say Nothing At All. I like the way he delivered it just like Ronan Keaton. The way he goes, the smile on your face lets me know that you need me. There's a truth in your eyes. <laughs> Sorry about the time I was a young kid. <laughs> it used to kill me. <laughs> That tone is just too funny. All right, coming up next, as you know, our Durban Nights, we've got Sienna McClava and Dacian Styler Nadu with Padigiri.
The original composer and lyricist and everything for the song. Uh, it, it's, his name is Bima Naidu Styler. Well, I call him Bima Naidu Styler. Well, it's Bima Naidu. I'll call him Bima Naidu Styler since it's Styler's dad. Uh, he's actually late, so I'd like to say up in the heavens. I know he's very, very proud. Thank you so much for delivering that, uh, Mr. McClava and Mr. Naidu. Now, guys, if you feel you've got talent, don't forget you can drop us a WhatsApp at 074-660-5829. You're going to see the number right there. There's it. Coming up next, you can see it. Okay, if you've got talent and you've got a smartphone, capture it with a camera, turn it landscape, and shoot the entire act of whatever is it that you're doing if you're talented. It doesn't have to be music. It can be anything that you, you feel is your talent and send it to Attenville TV and we'll screen it live. Now, since it's a Monday morning, what did you get up to this weekend or what did you get up to during your Black Friday on Friday? Let's take a look at where I visited. See this. <laughs> Circle in Attenville Extension 4. Oh, yeah, baby. That's where I spent my Friday. That was epic. The food was good. A very big thank you to Kakisa, who is the manager of the Nkuku restaurant. Thank you so much for having us over. He had the Attenville TV team come and chow down for free. Uh, that was their launch of the Nkuku Black Restaurant. Beautiful meat, beautiful salads, beautiful everything. I got my free energy drink as well. I think the director forgot to put in Kakiso himself in, in, in the montage of the, the Nkuku Lounge. But hey, you know what? We'll do this again tomorrow. We'll advertise again tomorrow. <laughs> and then you can go to the Nkuku restaurant and enjoy yourselves a meaty feast. To have a meaty feast, everything there is meat, 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 meat. It's all about meat. But if you're fasting here, yeah, you can check it out on Wednesdays or wherever you don't fast. It's okay. All right, so join me again tomorrow, same time, same place, right here on the Crack of Dawn. As this show is about everything, it's a variety show to make you laugh, make you wonder what happened there. It's, it's, it's also about your current affairs. So I let you know what's happening around you if you don't know already. If you haven't watched the news, then watch the Crack of Dawn early in the morning, 7 a.m. up until 8 every single weekday, Monday through to Friday with myself, Kimera Hiral. Well... I'll take you guys a bit later. As you know, there is a show called The Journey. It's a, spir a spiritual show about exploring Hinduism as a whole. Join us tonight from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Don't be late. Yeah, from myself, take care of yourselves and each other. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye for now.